Good morning, Robert Stribler. It is October 10th, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I am going to revisit the recent IPCC 1.5 degrees Celsius report. And I, I am going to talk about the conversation over the report and why, one, why this report is so important to why this report, though it might not be perfect, is, is a very essential report and one that we should heed, and why a consensus, somewhat more conservative consensus science, though possibly missing certain aspects of, of human-caused climate change potentials, is overall getting the message as, as right as they possibly can for an institutional body that incorporates a, a variety of ideas in an evolving science in which our understanding is still evolving. Okay, so getting into this, I, I'd like to point out in particular some statements by the scientists, and I'm going to provide links to the scientific statements for you so that you can read and further discuss and learn more rather than jumping to early conclusions or taking on um, a, an overly dark or conspiratorial mindset, which in my opinion just clouds the issue entirely. The IPCC is, in my opinion, doing the absolute best it can given the circumstances and its core issue that we should rapidly transition to renewable energies, energy systems in order to address human-caused climate change, rapidly reduce carbon emissions, and learn how to draw carbon down from the atmosphere is a good core message and one that we need to heed, that we need to follow, and that we need to add a little bit of a caveat to note that even though IPCC's message from this 1.5C report is very urgent, it is likely that we should err on the side of the situation being a bit more urgent than IPCC describes it. And to understand that consensus science tends to err on the side of conservatism, so, so we, we need to even redouble our efforts more to heed the message from IPCC, but to understand that we are probably going to have to apply the recommended courses of action by IPCC, but probably go beyond that as well. Okay, so that's a good first statement, and, and now I'm going to get into some statements from the scientists. And, and this one from Catherine Hay, who, who's, who's announcing a Meet the Science, Scientist session called Let Science Speak. Uh, which is going to be a, an amazing, which is an amazing series of short videos uh, talking about the IPCC 1.5C report and providing a hopeful response. And I encourage you to take a look at that. I'd also like to call your attention to Dr. Terry Hughes, who is a world-renowned expert on coral reefs, who has been sounding an alarm about continued fossil fuel burning, continued carbon emissions into the Earth's atmosphere, and the severe danger to coral reefs. And, and it's worth noting that the IPCC report really highlighted the risk to coral reefs at this time, and, and, and in my opinion, highlighted it very well. It's one section of the IC, IPCC report, in my opinion, one of many sections that hit the nail right on the head. And Terry Hughes notes that you would think there'd be an immediate reaction to the IPCC report from coral reef management agencies, reef fishers, the tourism industry, dive magazines. Why the silence? Because the IPCC report notes that with 1.5 C warming, we lose in the range of 70 to 95% of, of the corals, I'm sorry, not 70 to 90% of the corals. And at 2 C war warming, two degrees Celsius global warming, According to the IPCC report, you lose 99% of the corals. That is a, a catastrophic impact to corals. 
So, and, and Terry Hughes is a, is a world-renowned expert on corals. And, and in my opinion, we need to listen to him. We need to listen to what he has to say. I'm going to include his, his uh, Twitter feed link, and, and I encourage you to read his, his statements on corals and on the impacts of human-caused climate change to corals and on the urgency, the severe urgency, to reduce global carbon emissions rapidly. And here we have a clean energy leader, Elon Musk, noting that the IPCC report is a reminder that it's important to accelerate the advent of cars powered by electricity made from solar power. This is one major way that we can rapidly reduce carbon emissions by rapidly reduce, I'm sorry, rapidly deploying clean energy and replacing carbon intensive energy systems with wind and solar and electric vehicles and other clean energy systems. This is gonna to have, to, have to happen rapidly if we are going to get out of, of very, very severe climate harms in, in the range of four degrees to five degrees Celsius warming this century, if we continue to burn fossil fuels. So, so we need to consider the IPCC report in this context, as bad as 1.5 to two degrees Celsius warming looks in the IPCC report, four to five degrees Celsius warming resulting from continued fossil fuel burning is much, much worse. So, so we need to really, really, really think about this clearly and respond to the situation appropriately in that the situation now is, is a global crisis edging into global emergency and, and, and already an emergency for, for corals and things like that. But, but for many other aspects of the Earth system, there are other emergencies locked in at certain levels of warming, and, and we want to avoid those, and transitioning to clean, clean energy is the primary pathway for doing that. I'd like to also point out that for IPCC, there are a number of aspects in this report where IPCC might have softballed it. Uh, there, there are a number of aspects where, where IPCC did not softball it, but Dr. Michael Mann in We Are Even Closer to Climate Disaster Than IPCC Predicts talks about some of the areas where, where IPCC might have been a bit too conservative, conservative and, and there has been a tendency historically in the past for IPCC to lean to, to being conservative, lean, lean on the side of least climate drama. And uh, Michael Mann in, in, this, in, in his talk over at uh, the Real News Network does provide a, a good context and a good frame for understanding where IPCC might have even been a bit conservative, even in this alarming uh, and, and realistically alarming report. And, and in conclusion, I just, let's, let's see if we can have some time here. We've got about two minutes. In conclusion, I'd just like to read this final quote from, from Dr. Michael Mann to talk about really what's most critical. What is the most critical to draw to take from this report? And so, so, so it's critical. People can impact the process. People can impact the problem by voting. That is one very important way that we can act to help avert climate catastrophe. Well, even in the absence of national le leadership, we have no national leadership on the issue now, but we have leadership at the state level, states like California led by Jerry Brown, the, the West Coast states, New England, many mid-Atlantic mid mid states have banded together to form consortia to put a price on carbon, to incentivize renewable energy. Many of our largest biz businesses, our largest companies and corporations here in the US are acting to reduce their carbon emissions. And because of that, we may meet our Paris obligations even without support from the pres president or the Republican Congress. But as I said before, we need to not only meet those obligations, we need to improve on them substantially if we're going to, if we're going to avert catastrophic warming to the planet. And that's going to require leadership at the national level. One way to try to ensure that happens is to show up at the polls and to vote out politicians who refuse to act. So, so some very clear messages coming from climate leaders and from IPCC, from Dr. Michael Mann, from Dr. Terry Hughes, from Catherine Hayhoe and many other scientists. I urge you to listen to the scientists, to listen to what the science, science, scientists are saying and to do what you can to support a global climate response. We need it. We need it now. Thank you for joining me.
I'll be chatting with you soon.